The organizers of the Cambodia International Conference on Mentoring Educators and the New Generation Pedagogical Research Center, as well as the Institute of Technology of Cambodia. On this invitation, I am very much appreciative for inviting me to share to you my experiences in mentoring of a high-end graduate school in Middle East today. Ladies and gentlemen, greetings and good day to all of you. This is Dr. Eduardo P. Malagapo, Dean and Professor of the Graduate School here of the Philippine Christian University here in Dubai, United Arab Emirates. My presentation today is composed of three phases. Phase one is the mentor's journey. Phase two is the review of related literatures. And phase three is the result and discussion. Now let's talk about phase one, which is the mentor's journey. I authored an autobiography entitled An OFW's Personal Saga, True Love, Faith, and Hope. One of the experts as found in chapter 11, pages 57 to 58, here it says that the teaching profession is the way of life that without teachers and the knowledge shared, the universe and her people will not be developed and will not prosper. As I continue with my journey in teaching, it was and is parallel to the kind of academic environment that we have gone through. In pursuing the, the educational excellence through our graduate programs in the Middle East, we link with the Philippine Christian University Graduate School Transnational Education. And it is located in Dubai, United Arab Emirates. We have to support the Filipino overseas professionals who are working in this uh, grand city of Dubai and the whole Middle East in order for them to sustain life's challenges and personal growth and development. We apply the innovative teaching methodologies such as qualified professors, material sources established curriculum, syllabus, lecture, discussions, case studies, projects and immersions among others that will attract the interest of the prospective students to enroll. Our graduate program started in 2005 with only four students in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Then it grew to several students its trimester throughout the Middle East. We have the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Qatar, and Kuwait. Then we have the immersions in short postgraduate courses, which were part of the programs. 
and we conducted it at the Harvard University in Massachusetts, USA. Since 2005, we have at least seven programs that has been conducted. And we also conducted our immersions in Singapore at the Marina City and Pasig Metro Manila at the University of Asia and the Pacific and in Oman or Muscat Oman and the Crown Plaza Hotel in Bahrain and the Golden Tulip Hotel and in uh, Abu Dhabi Hilton Hotel and in Dubai the Movin Peak Hotel among others. Now the teaching methodologies were the author's foundations in mentoring students. We applied the case study method using the Harvard case analysis and the Fred David SWOT analytics approach and the IEEZA business school simulation approach. And then this author's mentoring signature was premised on eight strategic teaching approaches, namely, number one, the theory and the application of the topic, second, lecture and discussion and students' interactions, third, the professor's critic and recap before class end, fourth, assigned projects, its term, fifth, the use of case study and methods. Sixth, immersion projects. Seven, monitoring and control. And eight, in mentor mentors relationship, there is always fun and enjoyment throughout the class. In summary, for phase one, which is the mentor's journey, number one, for so educational excellence through graduate programs in the Middle East. Second, support Filipino overseas professionals in sustaining life's challenges and personal growth and development. Third, apply the innovative teaching methodologies such as Harvard case study analysis. And fourth, apply the author's mentoring signature based on eight strategic teaching approaches. How did or how did or how do we manage in mentoring our graduate study programs? This is a $65 question. My answer is the application of the mixed internet of things and the traditional teaching methodologies. Using the e-learning and in which case it includes also the professor's experiences for the past 30 years then the blended learning system using Portal, Blackboard, Globo, Ginomeo, and Zoom platform. And there is a face-to-face -face before COVID-19, and then constant communications through emails, Facebook, Messenger, WhatsApp, other internet of things. And resulting to a quite a number of students intake yearly. Our statistics will show that we have a total of 339 for the last 15 years, all graduates from their MBE, Master in Management, and doc Doctoral Philosophies. For the MBE, we have 245, Master in Management, 33, 23, Doctor of Philosophy, 71, a total of 339, and a yearly intake of 23. Now let's go to phase two, which is review of related literatures. We have cited six citations, which, are, which has been published in journals. Number one is the Mentoring Relationships in Graduate School by Tinimbaum et al, 2001. Second, Mentoring Faculty Online, a literature review and recommendations for way best programs. Hyundai et al, 2020. Number three, vision and mission and blended learning system. EPM and associates programs for Middle East operational sustainability. 
which is my dissertation, 2019. Flexible blended learning system for APM Rashid's high-end executive courses in the Middle East, Bicoy et al., 2019. Blended learning in higher education institutional adoption and implementation, Porter et al., 2014. And mentorship at a distance, Rankin et al., 2020. The next slide will show you the major of objective, which is to mentor our graduate students and professional develops them as businessmen, entrepreneurs, and corporate executives, researchers, and professors. Our specific objectives are six-fold. The first one is to share mentoring experiences and skills through the application of the Internet of Things of the Industrial Revolution for second to introduce innovative pathways in solving case studies in the class as actual simulation application in the corporate environment. Third, to share best professorial practices and application of research findings to solve corporate problems as encountered in action situation by executive students in their workplaces. Fourth, to focus on research projects that can provide new knowledge to mankind and can help support innovative projects in the students, the corporate landscapes, as well as the government's flagships. To date, we have 27 published inter internationally and two scopus. Fifth, to establish partnership and collaborations between researchers globally and participate in any international research forum. Sixth, to establish a deep bench in graduate research for the benefits of the students and the school and the general public. And we have here the methodology. We use the qualitative design involving content analysis of scientific literature obtained from research databases such as Google Scholar, Directory of Open Access Journals, Public Med Medical Library, ResearchGate, and other digital materials. The data were clustered to answer the main and the specific objectives of the study. Then we have phase three, which is the result and discussion. Now here we discuss the mentor's observation, positively the barriers and future recommendations. Now mentoring is defined as a mutual and supportive learning relationship either by two caring persons or a mentor for a group of persons or students sharing new or old knowledge, experiences, wisdom, and understanding how will it benefit for them. The organization can further develop and disseminate the wealth of talent, skill, and knowledge of its employees and staff. And both members and mentors have opportunities to expand their knowledge and skills through their instruction and facilitation of others. Then the next slide will show the mentor-mentee relationship as an example. About six of the world's most successful people have been mentioned by Wikipedia, have benefited and advanced their careers and built their networks like Freddie Laker mentored Richard Branson of Virgin on business, Aristotle for Alexander the Great in politics, Martin Scorsese for Oliver Stone at New York University on film di directing, Johanna Christian Bach for Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart in music, Eddie Merck for Lance Armstrong in sports, Obi-Wan Kenobi for Anakin Skywalker and Nizan Luke Skywalker in fantasy. Then we have citations on mentor doctoral students relationship. Here, the doctoral student faculty tandem fits into the view of the professional acting as guide and teacher as a less experienced person termed as academic advisor and the mentor by Creton Parks and Creton 2008. The advisor's job is to provide information 
on degree requirements and guidance on how to navigate the system, a job that does not have to be filled by a faculty member. And according to Galbraith, Galbraith 2003, a mentor is a role model, professional, and a faculty member. Mentoring is more intricate, long-term, one-on-one relationship more than providing information. Then we have our own EPM and associates, positive observations and barriers to effective monitoring. Now for the positive or in observations, we have the following. Number one, the willingness of the EPMA graduate students to learn the hard way in research using MRAD format. Second, the eagerness and the full support of the research team to develop the graduate students into full-time researchers that involves constant monitoring and follow-up. Third, the mentor's involvement in the international and local presentations through the mentor's constant follow-up and the success of their participations in the events. Fourth, the mentee's positive attitude towards their mentors and their committed conformance to the strict requirements of the research and ethics team requirements. Fifth, full support of the university management towards the implementation of the new MRAD format to be the official guide in the research studies starting 2020. The next slide will show you the barriers to effective mentoring. There are five. The first one is lack of time on the part of the mentor and mentee in coordination in the preparation and completion of the research study. Second, lack of communication to both mentor and the mentee to agree on what guide to be adopted. Third, the mentee's abidance and discipline in the following up of their milestone schedule to complete the research projects per time frame. Fourth, short in the requirements of the research project in terms of resources, such as the budget, time, constraints, the respondents, the support from the statistician, among others. Fifth, lack of mentees professional time if the work requires them to stay in the workplace beyond the usual work time, for example, during COVID-19. And we have future recommendations. There are nine of them. The first one is future guide to weigh rewards and costs before deciding to mentor, while others will lean more towards rewards or costs regardless. Second, there is a need to prepare a guide for future mentors to study the graduate school curriculum to come up with the right direction in which field they will specialize that will provide their mentees the benefit to develop the research skills and its application to the current situation. Third, revisit the interview of the mentors after passing some time to examine how participating in the study has impacted their perspectives on mentoring. Fourth, examine how the adapted conceptualization of the age of the social exchange theory works with other participants to maximize benefits and minimize cost. And the last slide, number five, prepare guide for better ways to match mentors and mentees to practice and training that can be positively influenced by reflections of the participants. Sixth, future curriculum in his graduate school should include mentoring, especially to those graduating students who will be preparing the research projects and they rely on the support of their advisors or mentors. Seven, more researches on graduate students mentors and any fellow study needs to be conducted to ensure dynamics of research work. Eight, enhance an effective mentoring relationship 
between the mentor and the mentee to support the novice researcher. And ninth, revisit the barriers and conduct a study to minimize or eliminate these negative factors for a common good. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, those are a part of the presentation that I just shared to you. In conclusion, I would say that in uh, the mentoring process, as I uh, experience best on how we we did it in our graduate school here in the Middle East as uh, mentioned to you earlier we need to have this uh, in which I just summarize it like this. There are only, there are four things that are, that has to be considered. Pursue educational excellence through graduate programs in the Middle East. Second, support Filipino overseas professionals in sustaining life's challenges and personal growth and development. Third, apply the innovative teaching and methodologies such as Harvard case study analysis and fourth, apply the author's mentoring signature best on eight strategic teaching approaches. That's all for today. And thank you so much for this opportunity provided to us. And God bless everyone.